Welcome to another edition of Into the Issues. I'm Steve Pappas, I'm your host. My guests today are Sue Minter, Executive Director of Capstone Community Action, and Liz Scharf, Director of Community Economic Development for Capstone Community Action. Thank you for being here. Hi, Steve, thanks for having us. Yeah. Um, for full disclosure, I am the Chairman of the Board of Directors of Capstone Community Action and have served on the board on and off for about six years now. Um, the issues that uh, Capstone deals with on a very regular basis touch a lot of the issues that we talk about here on this show. Um, but for full disclosure, we wanted you to know that I have a direct connection with the organization. So, Sue, I'm going to start with you. You well, being my boss. Well, yes. <laughs> I guess technically that's true. Um, but I don't see it that way. No, I don't. Um, Talk a little bit about what Capstone does, because I, I think people know the name, but they may not have a firm grasp of kind of the breadth and depth of its role in the community. I think you're right, Steve. Frankly, I served in public service for almost 30 years, and I really didn't understand the depth and breadth of what Capstone Community Action does until I came to work uh, with this incredible organization that really has a mission of helping people rise out of poverty. Mm -hmm. And we were established in 1965 with the War on Poverty and uh, are a nonprofit organization. So we um, have a board of directors. Um, and But we do a number of programs. Uh, we really begin by trying to meet people's basic needs, uh, providing food with the largest food shelf in Washington County. Uh, housing, uh, we do transitional housing units, housing uh, homelessness prevention. Also, especially important at this time of year, we do heating assistance throughout the winter. Uh, we do serve three counties here in Washington County as well as Orange County and Lamoille County. And we're one of five community action agencies across the state. So we really are a network of organizations serving people in poverty. and helping them rise out of poverty. We'll talk more about our community, our economic development program, but we also have one of the largest uh, programs is Head Start, so early education for disadvantaged youths mm -hmm. and their families, as well as weatherization services, so for low-income housing, uh, really trying to cut the cost of heating housing, make homes healthier and address our climate uh, contribution by reducing the amount we have to consume, the amount of energy. So we have a broad range of services. And I think some of the most powerful programs are really the ways we help people find economic self-sufficiency to rise out of poverty, whether it's helping uh, people develop special skills in the workforce, um, whether it is helping them find uh, better credit through the credit counseling we do, uh, develop assets so that they can really have savings, um, start new businesses through our micro business development program. We have a very wide range of really successful programs uh, that are really changing lives and having an impact on our community. Yeah. And how many folks come to the door on, in any given year? Well, it depends what program. Believe it or not, our food shelf provides food for over 5,000 people, and that's just in the city of Barrie and whoever comes to us. Um, each program provides a different level of service. We uh, serve for heating. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, 2,500 households received assistance for heating. Uh, when we look at all of the counties and all of the programs, we estimate about 16,000 people or assistance uh, is provided throughout this service territory. So. It's really a big impact, and you know we do look at poverty, and, and we just did a community needs assessment and understand that in our three counties, uh, nearly 12% of the population are uh, in poverty as defined by the federal government, which I would say is really in extreme poverty. And there are many people, um, so that federal definition of poverty is actually for a family of four, you have to earn $24,000 or less to be defined as in poverty by the federal government. But what we know is we have many, many more people than that coming to our doors in need of food, in need of um, heat, in need of housing, uh, because really it costs a lot more than that to even get by uh, in this economy here in Vermont. Mm -hmm. So uh, the needs are acute. Uh, we do everything we can to help people find their path, their opportunity for success, um, and especially economic independence. Yeah. Liz, talk a little bit about what your 
farm of Capstone does. Sue talked a little bit about it, but sure. um, yeah. it, it's it's not. I think people think of Capstone as being kind of that um, crisis or emergency mm -hmm. uh, resource, and it, as Sue was saying, it's much more than that. Right. So our program with community economic development is really about sort of creating ladders um, to to financial um, success um, and and stability. Uh, so Sue mentioned the uh, micro business development program. So we have a robust um, program that's actually statewide, but uh, we serve around 200 folks each year um, who are interested in starting a small business or who may already have a small business and could use some support around business plans, uh, trainings, marketing, uh, social media, using you know social media for their business. So we have training around that. Um, we also have what's called the Vermont Matched Savings Program, and uh, that's a program that allows, that's around the asset building field that Sue mentioned, which is allows people to save money for um, an asset, which is either a first-time home, a small business, higher education, um, and most recently we've added the opportunity to save for um, a car or uh, car repair uh, if it's necessary for you to get to employment. So people can save $1,000 and get a match of $1,000 in order to put down uh, towards a purchase of an asset. Um, we also, one program that um, Sue didn't mention but that's starting to really ramp up is our uh, VITA program, our Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. So we see a lot of people coming through our doors um, to have their income taxes filed with us. They're state and federal, and even if they don't uh, you know, technically pay taxes or have to file taxes, they may be filing a renter's rebate or uh, their homestead declaration. So we see a lot of folks coming in just to do those forms as well. So that we're starting the training on that, and we'll begin that uh, the second week in February through tax season, and that becomes a very busy time for us here at Capstone. Um, and uh, some of the work that we're now also working on, which I think we're going to go into a little bit more detail about, is uh, doing some uh, education around the 2020 census, which mm -hmm. is coming up. So that's a project that I'm working on as well right now. So we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, perfect segue. Um, so Sue, there's a concern here um, that, the, that you have raised in some op-eds and recent interviews that um, that this is, we represent, Capstone represents a population that is very much undercounted. And talk a little bit about why that is and why it's important that they are counted. Right. Um, I have been raising issues that are of great concern to me, particularly right now with some of the changes at the federal level that are being proposed by the Trump administration. And it relates uh, to the discussion around the census and my concerns there. Um, there are several proposed rule changes um, regarding uh, the very programs that the people in poverty that we serve um, benefit from. And uh, they have proposed, in fact, reducing uh, what it means to be poor. In other words, you'd have to have even a lower income to qualify for these programs if these proposed rules are adopted. Others are restricting eligibility for critical things such as uh, the food stamps, the, what we call the Three Squares Vermont, which we see families in need constantly really finding some of their critical nutrition on a daily basis through these programs. So I am concerned about that. And it leads us to the concern about the census and the possibility that we may again have to really work harder to address um, how we are counted. So I'm a sociologist. I always knew the importance of census information for evaluating uh, how communities uh, are recorded. I've also been aware um, uh, of how important the census is for congressional uh, boundaries. Um, we don't have that issue here as we only have one congressperson. But I now understand working for Capstone that the census is the critical count of people from which we distribute all kinds of federal dollars. In fact, it's estimated in Vermont over $2 billion in federal funds are distributed uh, based on our census count. Things like transportation funding, health care funding, uh, special education grants to our schools, and programs that we know at Capstone are critical. LIHEAP, the mm -hmm. Low Income Heating Assistance Program, which keeps especially seniors warm throughout the winter. Um, 
we know that all of these federal dollars actually come to the state of Vermont based on every single person that fills out their census. The census happens every 10 years, and Census 2020 is upon us very soon. Mm -hmm. We also know that there are what we call hard-to-count populations, and those are populations generally of the people we serve, people who uh, may not always be uh, responding to the mail, people who may, in fact, be homeless, people who are here in transition, even at college. Uh, or uh, a student who is uh, being invited a, a my exchange daughter. <laughs> yes, your board she exchange just counted. <laughs> She'll be counted <laughs> Sorry, in, Vermont. Exchange yep. in Vermont. Yep. The point is, we need everybody to fill out their census. And this year, I think there's a lot more and a growing distrust of government. Um, undocumented populations, uh, you may have read, have really been concerned because there was a discussion around whether citizenship would be a required element of the census, which it is not, thanks to a decision by the, the courts. Uh, but because it was raised, uh, there is an ongoing and understandable fear. And what we want people to know, that it is so important to fill out your census, that it is anonymous. This is not going to be information that is used by the government, but in fact information that is critical to getting federal dollars to our state, dollars that serve many, many needs from our roads and bridges to our schools to people who need assistance like food and heat. Um, so we think that the people coming to us, we want to do extra work to educate every citizen, but in particular the people who come into our doors and with whom we work, because we know that they may already be identified as a hard-to-count population. So we're putting an extra effort out, and we are going to be mobilizing actually with our partners across the state uh, to push this uh, important message. Everybody counts, so let's count everybody. Please fill out your census. And it might be interesting to hear about some of our local efforts on that. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the, that's the most interesting thing about this is that it's not as though there are, there's just a pool of census takers currently. That, that pool has to be built in, it has to be built in a very short amount of time. It can't just be anybody. And I guess my first question is, how does Capstone or the community action agencies around the, the state, how are they going to essentially do this count? Well, we're really stepping up um, as a network, uh, the Community Action Network, um, a lot because across the country, the community action agencies across the country are raising this issue. Mm -hmm. um, and we're doing it through raising awareness. Um, we hope to hire a, a statewide campaign director, essentially, to work at how do we get to the hard-to-count populations by showing up, whether it's at libraries, whether it's at um, concerts in the park, whether it's at uh, farmers markets, wherever we can find people, we want to be reaching um, folks to make them feel comfortable and confident in filling out the census. We cannot fill out a census for someone unless we are a trained and certified census taker, mm -hmm. uh, but we can help remind them, educate them, and uh, help them feel confident that this is uh, important and um, and secure uh, information to share. And Liz, how is that? How is that kind of manifesting itself locally? Yeah. So uh, I have spearheaded a what's called a complete count committee uh, for Central Vermont, uh, and what that will be uh, composed of is a group of community leaders um, in all facets um, of. Uh, of the community, so uh, we have invited to attend, and and this is going to be happening next week on the 14th on Thursday at Capstone. A meeting of about 15 people are going to be there that represent um, the hospital, um, the homeless shelter, the housing authorities, um, the Council on Aging, Economic Services, so the folks who um, help out with uh, your applications for temporary assistance for needy families and, and three squares, um, the, the library, um, and we have a couple of uh, people from the census themselves who will be there as well. Um, and so what our hopes are, are to create this committee that can then uh, mobilize and educate our various constituents who often overlap. So we've got, you know, you may have um, someone from 
uh, the Barry School District. Uh, so they'll be hearing from the the families will be hearing from the school district how important it is to fill out the census. They may be seeing a sign at the hospital that says, "Have you filled out your census?" And they may also be getting a message from um, you know their apartment complex that it's important to fill out the census. So. So by, by having this group of folks um, from different uh, areas, um, we're hoping that this message um, can be repeated um, from in, in various ways and from trusted sources so that people feel more comfortable and agree to complete the census. Um, and again, as Sue was saying, for some of these hard to count, it's not just hard to count populations, they're actually hard to count regions of Vermont, and that's just by default the, the area of where they are that may not have internet access or that may be uh, more rural areas that don't have necessarily access to, to larger cities and are historically known by the census as hard to count areas. And so we're going to be, you know, identifying, they're already identified, but we're going to be, you know, targeting those areas in particular to make sure that the message is being sent. Um, because what the hope is, is that the hope is that we get most people completing the census before someone has to knock on their door. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, uh, people are going to be hearing um, in March, they're going to be getting letters in the mail um, that give them the opportunity to either call on the phone, go online, or mail in their census answer. So that's sort of the first, um, the first hit. And then for those folks who haven't, there will be follow-up mails um, in April. And then for the folks who have not answered at all is when they will start doing the door-to-door. -door. So really, our goal as a Complete Count Committee is to try to get everyone to do the census before someone has to knock on their door. Um, and uh, and yeah, so I think it's gonna, we're going to have three meetings, uh, November, January, and March, um, which is, those are the months leading up to, uh, to the actual count on officially April 1st. Um, and I think it's going to be great. And we hope to get that, if there is a statewide coordinator, more of those complete count committees um, around the state, which I believe there are a few already. Mm -hmm. um, but this, I believe, is the, the one for Central Vermont, the only one for Central Vermont. Is this the first time for Capstone to be involved in it? Yes, and again, this is only done every 10 years. Um, and I think the stakes have gotten even higher uh, as federal dollars have gotten far more scarce. And certainly we see the incredibly significant um, impact of those dollars in terms of the community of people we serve. You know, we really are partnering with the federal government whose job this is, but we understand how hard that job is, particularly with the areas uh, of need that we see. And uh, as Liz said, we, we already know from the census of the past where uh, they have low participation rates, and our goal is to up that participation. Um, and, you know, we think that this, there's so many things happening in 2020. Uh, we're concerned that this will be forgotten, and we want to make sure we amplify the message just like anything else. You have to hear many times before you think, okay, I'm going to prioritize this activity. We can also make it available in all of our offices. You know, we are an incredible uh, partner with many agencies because we deal on many issues. And if every partner organization remembers to prioritize this, to possibly have a computer available at their, uh, in their waiting room like we will have. You know, Liz mentioned the VITA program, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance. Um, that's a great opportunity because I, I just want to mention that that's a volunteer opportunity. We are always looking for people. And I want to say last year we have one person who, or, who is our employee. She has organized last year 50 volunteers who in one tax season filled out, uh, supported uh, individuals who needed that assistance, over 1,600 uh, tax returns that returned into the pockets of, do, uh, of families who need it over $2 million in returns. Mm. Those dollars are spent right here locally. So it's just an example of how important this support is. But at our VITA, um, and we need your help, <laughs> anyone who wants to volunteer, um, but we will also use that as an opportunity to remind uh, the folks who are getting our help at that key time to fill out their census. Mm -hmm. um, the census is a short window. It uh, starts being available in mid-March, but the big push of the big day will be April 1st, Census Day. And then the last day is the middle of July. So we really have a short window to really 
push this message out there. And yeah. the questions, it, there's there's only a few questions. It's not going to take people a long time. There's a, and and there's also what's called the American Community Survey, which is done every year, which is uh, is also a census questionnaire that asks a lot of the uh, more uh, detailed questions, which do often ask you know s around the lines of citizenship. But the actual census itself is a very short um, questionnaire that really is about counting the number of people uh, in our country so that we have a real solid uh, number. And as you, if you've ever looked at census data, every other year is, is really um, an extrapolation of what they think the population is. Yeah. And it's also based on the American Community Survey, but that only goes to like um, three million sense. people. It's not, it does, yeah, just a, a small group of, of folks. And you may, people, so that they don't get confused, they may at the same time as getting their 2020 census questionnaire, they may also be randomly included in the American Community Survey. So don't be alarmed if you see that you're being asked to answer both, and they are required by law to answer both. So, um, Why do we do the census? We do the census so we know who lives where, uh, generally speaking, but um, because, for example, federal dollars uh, have to get spread out over 50 states uh, and all the communities in them. So how do you do that? Well, you sort of try to look at the numbers of need. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a great example of, you know, every individual counts when it comes to how do we spend these dollars. Um, and, you know, it's been estimated that in Vermont, for every census we do not fill out, we will be losing $3,000 per year for the next 10 years. So literally, that's federal money that we're going to, quote, leave on the table because we didn't fill out. Every person counts. And it's also used uh, in all kinds of ways. As I mentioned earlier, that count is very significant and where people live on the how we draw boundaries for um, congressional districts and senatorial districts. Um, it's used in all kinds of assessments as a sociology on looking at the impact of any kind of policy change mm -hmm. and then tracking that change over time. Sometimes we want to know how well is a particular policy uh, going and we can actually look at the impact through the changes in the demographic count. And the Constitution says we have to. Exactly. Oh, thank you for that good Let's reminder. Forget. Yeah, you know, Constitution protects the press, protects freedom of, you know, all all our basic free, basic freedoms. It's one of those ones that, you know, I think people take for granted the fact that the founding fathers felt like this was an important tool for tracking who we are as citizens. Yeah, thanks yeah. for the reminder on that. Yeah. Um, so what are next steps and how can everyday people watching this get involved? Well, if you're in Washington County, join the Complete Count Committee. Mm -hmm. um, most importantly, if you're an individual, Keep your eyes and ears open and look in your mailbox. It won't be until March, either in your email or mail. But as soon as you get that, please fill it out and tell your neighbors and friends to fill it out. Let people know it matters. It matters in terms of how much food your neighbors might or might not get. Um, and it's that clear and that simple and that urgent. Mm. Yeah. Other ways. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better, but I mean, it, seriously, it is one of those things where you don't want to ignore it, and uh, it really is, you know, answer all of the questions because the questions do matter. Um, you know, if they're asking you, you know, what your family relationship is, that may be related to, you know, programs or policies around um, single parents or, or children, you know, policies around uh, child care. So answering all of those questions that they ask um, are important uh, to forming these, these decisions, these critical decisions that are going to be made over the next 10 years. And it really is. It's about the next 10 years. It's not about the next year. What matters in our answers this year impact us for a full decade. Yeah. This is what we say. Everybody counts, so, so let's, let's count, count everybody. everybody. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> thank you very much, Sue Minter and Liz Scharf from Capstone Community Action for being here, talking to us about what Capstone does and how important it is to follow through on the census. Thanks well, for thank having us. Thank you so much, yeah. Steve. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for watching. Until the next edition. <laughs>